All right, now we're going to look at the singular value decomposition, which, which is our next uh, decomposition. So the singular value decomposition basically is described this way. For any complex M by N matrix, and that, not, notice when we did the, the eigenvalue decomposition, we needed a square matrix. Here we don't need a square matrix. So the singular value decomposition is more general than the eigenvalue decomposition. For any matrix A, there exists the matrices U, S, and V, such that A is equal to U times S times V adjoint. Okay, in MATLAB we can use we can use it this way. Okay, so what's going on with this? U is a unitary matrix, and it's a unitary matrix of the eigenvectors of this quantity, A, A adjoint. So remember, A itself may not be square. But when you multiply A by A adjoint, you will get uh, a square matrix. S is a real diagonal matrix of the non-negative singular values. So uh, by diagonal, keep in mind, S itself is not square. So if it's tall and thin, it's only diagonal as far as it can go, right? So there will be zeros down at the bottom, but that's, that's how S is defined. And then V is also a unitary matrix of the eigenvalues of A adjoint times A. So notice that these two are very similar to each other, but significant, but clearly different. And A adjoint A, again, will be a square matrix. So, um, so S has the singular, the singular values in it. So this is, this is the situation in general when A is a complex matrix. If A is a real matrix, then we basically get the same kinds of things, but all of our matrices now are real. U, S, and V are all real. Actually, in both cases, S is a real matrix of positive, of non-negative values. It'll have all zeros and some non-negative values along the diagonal. And and there are there's actually some order to all of this. So as I mentioned, U is a unitary matrix, so it is uh, it satisfies this relationship. And again, it's it's a matrix of eigenvectors of A A adjoint. So if we if we multiply this out, I get the diagonal of the singular values. Uh, v is also a, a um, unitary matrix. And if I multiply this out, I get a diagonal matrix with the singular values along the diagonal. So the the matrix S. So, th so this quantity is actually S. Uh, no, it's not S. It's like S. <laughs> this is S. Um, so the, the difference is that this matrix and this matrix may not even be the same shape as our original matrix. This will be the same shape as our original matrix. Okay, so this matrix will be M by M matrix. This matrix will be N by N. Our original matrix was M by N. Okay, so in general, we will have this form. Sigma 1 is a diagonal matrix with the, the singular singular values along the diagonal. And where R, little r, is the rank of the matrix. So we know that just because we have some matrix does not mean it has full rank. Full rank means that either the rank is equal to N or the rank is equal to M. Okay, N or M. That, so that's a full rank matrix. All right. Um, so, so generally speaking, when we define the singular value decomposition, the singular value decomposition again has these diagonal elements, and generally it's assumed that these singular values are ordered. Okay, that is, sigma one is the largest singular value, sigma r is the smallest positive singular value, and so they're ordered. So it's an it's an descending order, sigma one being the largest, sigma r being the smallest. Okay, so so we can actually order the singular values, whereas the eigenvalues, for example, we can't order because they're complex. So you have a real part and you have an imaginary part. So how do you order complex things? That's not a simple simple problem. Um, so but sigma uh, the sigmas the singular values can be ordered because they're real and they're positive. Um, one property associated with singular values 
is something called Schmidt pairs. So again, we have our matrix is m by n. For any singular value a, there exist vectors v and w, both of which have unit norms, where a v is equal to sigma times w, a adjoint w is equal to sigma times v, sigma is equal to w adjoint a v. Okay, so those that's what the Schmidt pairs do. So actually, I can think of this in terms of uh, v being a right singular vector and w being a left singular vector. So we have that situation. Okay. So this is this is significant. We'll, we'll come back and look at this property in just a little bit. So what do the singular values actually mean? The, eigenvalu the eigenvalues mean something specific. We'll come back and see what that means when we look at stability of systems. Um, but the singular values have a have a more um, tangible meaning. So if, for example, we have a circle, a unit circle in two dimensions, and we multiply each point on this circle through our matrix. So remember, each point has an x and a y value, or so two elements in it. So I take each of these points, map it through A, and I will get those points mapping onto an ellipse in the output space. Okay, so a circle in the input space maps into an ellipse in the output space. The largest singular value will be the the, the large the major axis of that ellipse, and the smallest singular value will be the minor axis of that ellipse. Okay, so I, I will not only have a singular value, but I will also have a vector associated with that. So here I have a singular value and a vector associated with it. So notice over here, these, um, these, these points don't have any specific direction. I don't have a largest axis, smallest axis, for example. But once I map them through, then I have a, a, a clearly uh, a smaller axis and a larger axis. So, so the singular values and the singular vectors have significance uh, in this in this way in this mapping. Here are some singular value facts. If I take the spectral radius of a matrix, that's less than or equal to this, the largest singular value of the matrix. Okay, and this is true for any square matrix. If if my square matrix is a normal matrix, then the large then the singular values each of the singular values is equal to the magnitude of the eigenvalues so in this case i have this relationship so for most again this is only for normal matrices it's not just for any matrix it's for normal matrix we have this relationship so don't confuse don't just assume this is the case all the time it's not the case all the time it only holds for normal matrices if my matrix is a positive or positive semi-definite matrix then we have that the eigenvalues are equal to the um, singular values. Okay, so so we we seen those things. For every singular value sigma i, there is a right singular vector v i such that sigma i is equal to a v i over the norm of a v i over v i. So that's actually one of the properties of the Schmidt pairs. We, we have this, this relationship. So, um, but this is, this is a significant thing. So associated with a singular value, there is a singular vector that, such that this, is, this relationship holds. Where, again, the norm of a vector is that vector adjoint times itself, square root. Okay, so... These are some singular value facts. And this is the singular value.